Nowadays, one-fifth of all the merchant ships afloat are tankers. They're a new branch of the traffic and profession of the sea. You see them in the wide bends of the Hooghly, moored at Singapore and Tarakan, loading beneath the tall towers of Cardon, Venezuela, probing the dawn mists of the Mersey, bringing oil from South America. You can always tell a tanker she has her funnel and engines at the stern, and she's never in port for long. She can't be. This world runs on oil, and the tanker's business is to keep it running. Look down from the North Pole and see how the oil moves round the circle of the globe. Moving into Mina El Amadi in the Persian Gulf, then through the blaze of Suez and Port Said, past the gateposts of the Mediterranean, Malta and Gibraltar, butting the Atlantic swell with her cargo of Kuwait crew. From the fields to the refineries, where the black crude is manufactured into products, the tankers form the floating chain between. And all the time, the consumers are sending in fresh demands. Across the globe to the hub of the whole system, to the center that controls the operation of the fleet. In our case, we work from London. Of the 2,000 odd tankers in the world, we operate about 450. 200 of these are our own, Dutch, British, French. The rest we charter by time or voyage, as and when we need them. In this office, the oil you want is fitted into the worldwide pattern of transportation. Here, the tankers are routed out of Arctic waters, maybe into a coral lagoon or sent from Borneo to India, or Norway, or South America. It looked humdrum enough, filling in forms, allotting tanks, but somehow, through it all, you can smell salt water. by the use of position lines obtained from two different observations. Comes easy. After 40 years, eight bells and eight again. Noon to midnight, and the watches change once more. Cold infinity in the palm of your hand. Steady as you go. Course 059 degrees, log 93, wind northwest, force eight. At the head of the table, the master, Captain Sear. Next, the chief engineer and his wife. It's her first voyage. Trotter, the second engineer. Then Sparks, with the news of the world at his ear. On the bridge, Paddy, the third officer. And on watch in the engine room, the third engineer. Forty years he's been at sea. We used to watch the wind. Now we watch the engine, doing it all for us. I often wonder what the old hands would have thought of all this modern chromium of ours. The men that fought the yards with the clouds cutting overhead and the sea snarling at them from below. And things have changed. Nothing but paper now, form, figures. I sometimes wonder whether I'm a master mariner or a, an electronic brain. I made my first trip just 40 years ago. I was a pretty cocky apprentice then, like they all are. Mind you, I've no regrets. Life at sea is better now.